some of my partners actually disagreed with me. They wanted to stick it out and they said, oh, well, these guys are never going to be able to do what we do. We've been doing it longer. And I said, well, look, with billions of dollars, you can do anything <laughs> and yeah. business. And uh, so I, it was kind of a struggle to be honest towards the end of, of me wanting to exit and my heart wasn't really in it anymore. And I wanted to move on to the next thing, but I was still, you know, kind of, I still had to do my thing with the business. And so I just became completely focused on selling. Welcome to the gentleman success, happiness and fulfillment talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. As always, I have an incredible gentleman, which I resonate a lot with, and I'm very excited to get to talk to him, get to connect with him, and get to learn from him, and get to call this that I'm doing right now work. It's so fulfilling, and I'm having so much fun. But before I introduce him to you, though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been leaving comments, reviews, likes on all the major podcasting platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, and to those who have been watching on YouTube as well, thank you very much. And I want to ask you for a small favor today. I want to ask you that if you get something out of this interview, if you get some type of value, some type of uh, information of, or the inspiration to go out and take action, I want to ask you to please share this episode with one friend, since this is how we grow, this is how we're able to share our message and motivate, inspire, and bless other entrepreneurs out there. And while you do that, subscribe, like, uh, so that you want another live changing episode, uh, you know, here in the future. I'm planning on doing 500 this year. So you're, we're, in, we're in for a treat. And today I have uh, Will Moore, and he's a serial entrepreneur, gamification, habits, and happiness expert. Uh, I'm, very to, I'm very excited to, talk, to dive deep into that. And after, after his delivery startup for, no, after, no, sorry. After exiting his startup for $321 million in 2019, he made it his mission to help other entrepreneurs become the entrepreneurs that will run the most important businesses, which, uh, which is their life, right? And uh, his system involves gamification, habits, and the latest science and technology to make it fun, to make developing successful habits fun. And this is what he does. And... Um, I, I would call that helping men become modern gentlemen, but, you know, he calls it, you know, same message, different messenger. And I'm excited to have you, Will. Thank you very much for being here, man. And you're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm stoked to be here for sure. Thank you. Awesome. So, man, the first thing that I do is uh, I tell my guests to walk us through their entrepreneur journey in 75 seconds or less. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> I grew up, you, were, you and I were just talking a little bit before this. <laughs> I had a, a bit of a rocky start. Uh, I grew up with an alcoholic mother, and she was also verbally and physically abusive. Um, and my parents got divorced young. We moved around a lot. I never really quite fit in. By the time I got to college, I was your typical victim, convinced life was out to get me. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, and I fortunately had a professor in my freshman year of college that introduced me to a book. And he said, I had read this book and it changed my life. And I was really at the time thought this professor was like the coolest guy ever. And he was young and he was hip. And I was like, that's the guy I want to be. And so I went to the library to see if they had it. And sure enough, they actually did. And it was uh, called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it just started to, it was the first book that sort of shifted my mindset into saying that there's a different way to look at the world and myself and other people. And I just sort of started my, my journey and I became an insatiable self-help beast. And I just started reading everything I could get my hands on and listening to whatever I could and watching and going to seminars and just, just really just trying to evolve myself and taking notes along the way, using myself as a human science experiment to really grow, um, you know, one step at a time. And it didn't happen overnight. It took, it took a while, but sure, slowly, but surely I started to gain confidence. I started to have 
successes in these different areas of my life. I know you call them uh, SHF. I call it the five cores. Very similar, like you're saying, message that we're we're I sending. Freedoms. Just, the four freedoms. Sorry, excuse me. Four freedoms. I, pardon me. Um, and and but basically, you know, the same type of idea of there's these main areas of your life, and you need to kind of master and and continue to grow in. And if you do, you're going to have a, a much happier, healthier, easier time with the world. And so that's kind of what I did. And then flash forward, you know, uh, I was able to relationship wise, I was, I was doing well. I was making friends, dating. I, I ended up meeting a beautiful wife. I'm not married to with two beautiful kids and went on the way. Uh, I've started a company, as you mentioned, um, several companies, actually, that was my most successful one. Uh, it was like a door, it's called doorstep delivery, similar to like a Grubhub or a DoorDash, as people know it now, food delivery. And we sold it for, for quite a good sum in 2019. Um, my mindset, I've gone from this fixed victim to a growth owner where I, I went from, you know, my mind, my brain's broken in college, to suicidal. There's nothing I can do about it to, you know, obstacles are temporary roadblocks waiting for solutions. I've got everything within me to kick ass, take names. There's nothing that can get in my way. I'm going to give fear the finger. Let's fucking go. Right. Um, and then yeah. relationships, physical health, emotional health are my other course. And I feel like I do now, you know, it's, I'm 45 now and now it's, you know, it's, it's been a long journey of learning and falling on my butt, but I got to a point where when I would fail, I, I, I didn't jump up and down and love it. But at the same time, I would say, okay, what did I learn from that? And how do I grow from it? I think that's the, the main key difference. And I, I mentioned that word earlier, growth owner versus fixed victim. If you can sort of go from poor me, woe is me, I suck, I'm stupid, my brain's broken, there's nothing I can do about it too. All right, I haven't done it yet. I'm, I'm not there yet, but I have everything within me to do it. And it's only a matter of time. And with each step, every failure, there's a lesson in it and I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to continue to grow. I think that if you have that attitude and that mindset, you're off to the races. Yeah, man. So, so, um, I recently started to like hire people and my own team, I had to have a, like a team of nine, uh, in, in like every, on our meetings, I just come and I'm like, all right. So what are the problems that we have? What are the problems? And, uh, and then like, like two weeks ago, you didn't have any problems. And I was like, I didn't know what to do, man. I can't leave. I can't live without problems now. Like I look forward to having problems so that right. I can just like tackle them. Yeah. Oh, right. Then it becomes a game. Like how do we solve it? How do we solve this? Problem? Yeah. Pretty cool. And I was, and, and there were no problems. Like everything is working just the way it's supposed to work. And I'm like, I'm like the handicap for my team now because like I, all I'm supposed to do is just get out of the way. Right. But like there were no problems and I'm like, Oh, there's no problems. Really? And then I'm like, really like you're not struggling with anything and, and there, there weren't any problems and then the next day we had a problem so like that problem was solved <laughs> yeah. so yeah man cool so man did you actually think you had like a broken brain yeah i mean i, I did i thought you know i was super sensitive and um i I just always had was was ne had negative thoughts going through my brain and and just always was just super ultra kind of like all about looking at me and my problems and just focused on myself and, and I was like god my brain like is literally broken like there's nothing I can do to change this and um I guess I'll just have to kind of go through life this way and hope that it's not too bad you know like hopefully I can kind of skate by and not be completely miserable. Um, and then, you know, I, once I started realizing there's another side to that, like, just like anything, your brain's a muscle and you, if you want to improve it and change it, you got to work it out and you gotta, you gotta exercise it and you gotta learn what, what it wants, what it needs and, and do the work. Yeah. So, cause man, like growing up, um, I didn't fit in. And I also used to talk very badly about myself to myself like like I, I was always looking for all like my my faults all of my shortcomings um just you know like one of the so and that fear that fear you know drive drove me to like be a little bit more above average in like anything that I did because I was fearful of not being good enough so for example I used to like I started counting my calories and when I was like 10 or 11 years of age so by 11 and 12 years of age I had abs right uh, but like that was driven for fear. It was driven by fear, right? Because like by the fear of not being good enough and because of like how I talk to myself of like, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm ugly. I'm fat. I'm, you know, 
and um and a bunch of more things especially sexually like i was extremely insecure for some reason i i used to like think a lot of bad stuff about myself and um so what i'm trying to t- to say is i'm trying to ask is do you do you now know why that was yeah i mean i i i, I look at kind of where i've come and, and to me like i said it was just it's all about your what's in your brain and, and we go through life and we're born we're all born naked and blank slates tabula rasa ready to take on the world and then our parents come into the equation then our friends then peers then media then school you know before we know it and we have all these experience and all these things are happening and we sort of put our start to put ourselves into a box of like this is who i am this is my role in life this is my lot in life and 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 a lot of these things unfortunately that we're learning from these these influencers are are, 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 are wrong. And it's just, they're just passing on the same failure message that they received, you know, growing up. And these people are regurgitating these same, the same broken system. And it's just this endless cycle. And then as parents, you know, what happens is kind of like you, you were telling me about your dad and, you know, if you didn't do what you did, you would have grown up and you were on that same path and you probably would have had that same path your dad did. And then your kids, right. And it's just this vicious cycle. And so, to break that, you really got to, you know, have, I, I do feel fortunate that I hit what I kind of consider my rock bottom, my freshman year of college, because if I didn't, I don't know if I ever would have had anything that really sparked that. Like I need to change. Like if I don't change, like there's nowhere to go, but basically death, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so a lot of people, I, unfortunately though, I feel like kind of hover just above between rock bottom and their best life and kind of just above the bottom. And they, they never really have that. They, they're able to get by just enough to where they don't have that motivating spark to sort of, to change, to, to, to take that change. And for me, like I said, that moment in college, and I just kind of read that book and it just, uh, something went off in my head where I was like, I'm never going back to where I was. I, I now see that there's a different way to look at the world and myself and, this, and I'm going to just keep going forward no matter what it takes. And I just was determined. And, you know, that, so that, that to me is kind of how it, how it changed, how it triggered. Everybody's got their own journey, but it's never too late to start for anybody. If they're kind of living a life where they're sub, you know, they're not living this life that they, they know that they're capable of. And if, um, if they wanted to, to do that, you know, it's never too late to change and to start. So, so how did rock bottom look like for you, man? So, yeah, I mean, I was suicidal. Um, I just, I really felt like, like I said, in college. So, so when I, when I w- went to college, I was already struggling big time, as I mentioned earlier um, with my family and my mom was an alcoholic and my parents got divorced and I moved around and just never really fit in or found good friends. And then I was really hoping for a fresh start in college, but knowing what I know now, like that wasn't going to be possible because I was the same person inside. So, Mm, you know, but again, that's what a victim does. A victim goes, well, if only I hit the lottery or if only I was in a different school or if only, you know, and you think that if you get lucky and you'll get this break and everything will be great, but that's not, you got to do the work and you got to change from the inside. And that's, that's what I realized. I didn't. And so I tried to get into fraternity, which was a big thing at my school. And it was a small school and everybody got into these. Uh, it was, it was basically in a fraternity or sorority. Otherwise you were pretty much a le- social leper. And I didn't, I was like the only person in my entire hall that didn't like, I was in a, a, a hall with other freshmen guys, uh, like 35 guys. And in my particular hall, I was the only one that didn't get in. And I remember I locked the door, shut off the lights and just cried. And it was like under my pillow. And I had, there was like people banging on my door, like, well, you know what, Hey, what fraternity did you get into? You know, like, and everybody's like running around celebrating. And it was, it was devastating. Cause I knew right then and there, like I just begun my new freshman, you know, four year career in college and it was already over before it started. And so that's when I was like, I really did want to just kill myself at that point. And I mean, you know, at the moment, it, it, it probably felt like, like you said, like the end, right? You're just starting your four year career and it felt like the end. So, so what did you do? Did you, that's when you found the book or what did you do? Yeah. I mean, very shortly after that is when I, that professor mentioned that book and I read it and I just kind of, I hermited, you know, I, I, 
I just really started just becoming this insatiable self-help beast, just reading book after book and taking notes and, and using myself as this human science experiment, trying things out and sort of, you know, I was still, I remember the thought of sitting in the cafeteria. We had this huge cafeteria of like near other guys that were like in the fraternity that I didn't get into was just so cripplingly horrifying for me because I just felt like they'd all be like secretly laughing to themselves. Like, look at this loser who didn't get in and now he's trying to sit with us, yeah. you know? And I just slowly but surely started forcing myself to, to do things like, and that's, you know, an example of one where I just sort of forced myself into having interactions with people. And one of the main principles I learned from how to win friends and influence people is people don't give a shit about you. They care about themselves. <laughs> so it's like, make the other person feel special and show them that you're there to help and support and you care about them and stuff like looking at people's eyes, remembering their name, remembering details about their lives, little basic things. But like that stuff goes such a long way. And so I just started kind of practicing these things and I, and I got out of my own head. So it wasn't about me and, oh, they're looking at me. And it was more like, all right. So like, hey, man, like, where are you from? Like, what are you? And then I started seeing an actual progress and, and responses from people and they actually wanted to talk to me now and i'm like but i'm not even doing any talking all i'm doing is asking questions it's like ding 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 light bulb went off in my head right um mm -hmm. so that just slowly but surely started to and then i was reading more books and trying out different things and like i said it sort of all culminated into i realized there's these five main areas of your life and they all have these habits within them. And the idea is you're, you're, you you got to shine a spotlight in your life and figure out what negative failure habits you've developed and how to replace those with what I call success habits. Yeah. And I just want to, I don't want to go over like this concept that you talked about right now, which is uh, I call like getting unplugged from the matrix, which is realizing that like people don't care about you. And right? like, like most people they're in their own movie. I'm thinking about so they're they're in their own movie they're the they're like the star of the movie they're the like the main character of the movie and everyone else is like like an extra or they're just passing by right and they as the star in your movie they're thinking about what all the other people are thinking about them but in reality all the other people are also the stars of their own movie thinking about what all the other people are thinking about them but in reality no one's thinking about you because all the other people are thinking about what you're thinking about them So they don't even have time to think about you and right. like, they don't care enough to give an opinion. And if they do, like, it doesn't really matter because mo like 80, like 80% of people uh, don't care about your problems and the other 20 are, are, are glad that you, that you have them. Right. So, right. so like, you know, with that, so with that, like you can literally unplug yourself from the matrix and stop swimming in what I call goop, the good opinion, the, the good opinion of, of other people. So, um, yes. And let me, let me, let me pause there. So it's not all doom and gloom for people and make sure that they understand. So, so in, in by nature, we're selfish and it's all about us. Right. But, but what I realize is by faking it and basically like pretending to be interested at first when really I wasn't really interested uh -huh. and asking questions, something magical happened in that I actually did start becoming interested in in people. And as they told, talked more and they told me more about their lives and I started to get to know them and we started having conversations back and forth and I could tell that they cared about me. And then that became an actual reciprocal relationship. And it was, and, and it was such a great feeling. Right. And so it's not that nobody cares about you, but in general, most people are, they're selfish. They're going about their own day. They're doing their own thing, but you are, if you're able, if you're one of those people that's able to break through that barrier and like kind of be different than everybody else that they meet, which doesn't care about them either, but actually be like, Hey, you know, I'm interested in you. Like, let me, you know, then they kind of stop, pause for a moment. They're like, wow, like that's different. Most people don't get. Yeah. And, and then, you know, depending on who the two people are, you know, there's either chemistry or whatever you want to call it, friends, romantic, you know, there you, you develop this sort of relationship and, and it can be really cool and magical for people. Um, and that's how you, you know, you start new, and then all of a sudden those can turn into opportunities. And all of a sudden now you've got somebody that knows this other guy who's just happens to be. Hey, sorry for the interruption real quick. Do you want to know how I've been using my podcast to build a multi-million dollar network with over 100, seven, eight, and nine figure entrepreneurs reach hundreds of my ideal clients with my message, coaching service, and podcast get invited to speak on four stages in the last two months alone 
throw my own events and have over 100 successful entrepreneurs being willing to speak at my events, become a millionaire in one year, get mentored by multimillionaires, and achieve goals that I thought were going to take me 10 years to achieve in one year, and ultimately get unstuck and make quantum leaps of progress in my business and life with less than one hour of work just by being myself. If you answered yes to any of those, I just want to invite you to a free training showing you how I've been able to build a multi-million dollar network that is helping me achieve bigger income goals faster with only one hour of speaking and just being myself. To be honest, I thought I was going to be a multi-millionaire, speak on stages, throw my own events, and live a successful, happy, and fulfilled life of growth and impact in 10 years from now. That seemed so far away, but my podcast has been able to help me do that in less than six months. I'm actually doing all of that this year at the age of 21 with my podcast. I'm reaching thousands of people with my message, my service, my podcast, my coaching. I've gotten booked to speak on four stages in the last two months. And on these stages, I'm going to be getting in front of hundreds of my ideal clients, making roughly around 15 to 30K plus per event. Not only that, I have a network of over 100 high level multi million dollar entrepreneurs who have all agreed to speak at my events. Getting clients is a problem of the past. I've gotten the opportunities to learn from billionaires and I'm collapsing decades of time and I'm literally achieving what I thought was going to take me 10 years to achieve in one year. All of this because I use podcasting as a networking tool and I leveraged a rare concept called the cloak track and I want you and I want the exact same thing for you. Just imagine where you could be in one year from now if you get this free training right now. That is why I'm inviting you to this training. On this short training, you're going to learn how a small group of purpose-driven entrepreneurs, authors, coaches, course creators, and speakers have combined podcasting with this rare concept called the cloak track to build a multi-million dollar network, reach thousands of their ideal clients with their message, books, courses, coaching, make an extra $118,800, get booked on 10 stages, and build a successful network of entrepreneurs who speak on their stage, all of this in under six months. I'm going to walk you through the four steps to make this work. Step number one, alignment, getting clear on who you want to be, what you want to do, your goals, your purpose, and aligning all of this with building your podcast and your ideal podcast guest. Step number two, leveraging the cloak track to find your ideal podcast guest and never running out of them. Step number three, leveraging the cloak track to close an interview with anyone, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem. And step number four, the content machine. The content machine is the key to tapping into other people's audiences. And I'm going to show you all of those four steps. The link to access this free training is in the description of this video. Click on it and go watch this training right now so that you can learn how you can to build a multi-million dollar network that helps you achieve bigger goals faster and with less effort. Note, this training is only available to 18 people. So act right now and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye-bye. In the same field that you're wanting to be, and he introduces you, right? And then that's how you know, because you can't get anywhere in life. I found by doing it all yourself. Like you have to have people around you and a networking, t- a supporting team um, that that is helping you get there. And that's really, to me, the only way to do that. Oh yeah, man, a hundred percent. Like I actually, I actually talk about uh, a concept called the cloak track, which you know it involves like networking and connecting with people, right? Because I like I say that the fastest way for you to become the person that you're trying to be, to be, or to do the things that you're trying to do, or to have the things that you're trying to have 10 years from now, the fastest way for you to get there is for you to connect with people who are already there. And that's literally the fastest way to get there, right? Connecting with people. But the reason I'm, 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 t- I'm saying this is not because like people don't care about you, but because the number one thing that holds people back is just fear of what other people are going to think. But when you realize that they're not even thinking about you, that they're right. thinking about what you're thinking about them, then you get liberated and then you're able to go off and do whatever it is that you want to do. Right. Right. So, so yep. yeah. So you started into personal development. You got out of your own head, right? Started talking to people, started developing yourself, becoming, uh, you know, evolving and becoming better and better and, and all this stuff. And uh, that was in college, right? So did you keep on going to college? Did you finish your yeah. degree and all that? Yeah, I got my, so I actually did. I transferred my, my, after my sophomore year, I was evolving, but I was still hadn't gotten into the fraternity and I felt like I just was like kind of stuck. So I transferred to another school and really did start fresh this time. And I did get into a fraternity and I started taking the things that I was learning and had 
been uh, self-developing into this new environment and started having success. And it just, from there, it just slowly compounded on itself. And, you know, I became the pledge president of my fraternity, had had a, a great girlfriend, made, had some great friends, got really into sports. And then I, um, you know, start working out and just feeling more confident. And then I, what, right when I got out of school, I kind of shifted to the financial aspect of it all. Like a lot of young, young guys do, um, you know, and uh, young people, I should say, uh, you know, it's like, all right, now I'm ready to stake my claim and make my, make my way in the world. And I started really focusing on a lot of these financial books because I was already reading a ton of self-help books, but then I really started finding books on the financial side. And I, I determined pretty early on that I wanted to be my own boss and be an entrepreneur. I've got fired actually from several jobs. Um, <laughs> almost every job actually I ever worked. Like I was a bus boy. I was a waiter. Um, the only ones I didn't get fired for is when I used to mow lawns and shovel snow and rake leaves as a kid, which was kind of an early entrepreneur will in the making. I used to go around the neighborhood and just knock on doors and stuff. But I, I knew that I wanted to do it my way and my brain's very unique. And it, again, I used to be very ashamed of the way my brain is because I'm ADD and I see things in a certain way and it's hard for me to take orders from people. And um, so I, I, but now I see that as like the best thing ever because now I am where I am and I got to where I am. And if I was built like somebody else, I don't think I would have. So, you know, I just started embracing all these things and um, was able to build. My first business was a rental business. I started buying dilapidated houses, fixing them up, renting them out to actually kids from my college, alma mater, college student, uh, uh, my, my alma mater. And so I started with one house and fixed it up, got a roommate. He lived with me. He was helping me pay my mortgage was able to get a loan, buy another house. He helped me fix it up. And then we rented that out. And then I just kept doing that. And I did that 10 times. So I got up to 10 properties. And then my next business, like I said, was the, the restaurant, the doorstep delivery. I just, I recognized an opportunity where I lived, where I was like, there's all these people in this. I was living in Orlando, Florida at the time. The city is growing like wildfire and everybody wants good food, but you, all you can get is pizza and Chinese. I was like, there's gotta be something better than this. And now some that's all you know is that you can get whatever you want, but this was not the case. Just even ten years ago, you if you wanted to, if you wanted to order delivery, pizza and Chinese was all was it. That's and it was and it was just the local places that you had. Now you can, as you know, you can order anything you want from any restaurant. But that's I saw early on. I was like, this is going to be something, and so I grabbed my best friend at the time, and we started up the business. Cool. That's interesting, man. You started, how old were you when you started the business? Uh, probably at that time, because I did the real estate for a while. I was probably about 26, 27. All right. So then you started the business and then you, you grew it for like almost two decades? Uh, no, for, well, I, I grew it for about 10 years, 10, 11 years. So when I was like, 37. Then it was basically a, a three to five year process of getting it ready to be sold, which is we, we started it to sell it originally. Okay. Um, yeah. And so it was transitioning and we ended up growing it. We, you know, we started mainly Florida branches. We had corporate branches. We had franchises. Um, we were in we were all over the country at the end there. And so we, we got big enough to get on the radar of some of these bigger players and were able to get purchased. That's really interesting, man. So you 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 spent 10 years growing it into, into a successful business. And starting a business from scratch is not like no easy thing to do. So like I want to dig a little bit deeper into how were you able to do it? Like, like what are the habits that, that, that allowed you to do it? Um, were you always, were you also like, were you married and had kids at 26 when you started this business? Oh, I didn't get married until uh, my late 30s. So the business. Um, so yeah, I... Uh, and then I didn't have my first kid until I was actually 40. Okay. So you were already like financially well off, right? So you followed. Yeah. You, you followed like the, the modern gentleman, uh, like the, the, the ideal order, which is like physical freedom, working on yourself, emotional freedom, right? Working on yourself again then financial freedom. And then finally sentimental freedom. So yeah. that's cool. That's cool. Awesome. So, um, and then, uh, so like, I want to sell 
this business that I'm currently doing, I want to like later on, maybe add software. I don't know how it will evolve, but one of my goals is to like exit, right? In um, like five year, like you have, you went through a five year process to actually be able to get everything in order to sell your business. That's like, that's, that's insane. So um, I don't know. Let, let's see. Let's, let's, let's go into how were you able to like grow your business, man? And like in a period of 10 years to like, even think about selling it, how was that journey? Well, so yeah, I had a couple, I had my one partner and then we, we teamed up with two other guys. Um, we just started opening branches around the country. You know, we started in Florida first, it was Orlando. Then they had one in Gainesville and Tallahassee. And we ordered, we opened Miami, Fort Lauderdale, all the, all the ones in the big towns in Florida, Tampa. Then we started opening outside of Florida, Nashville, South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, we have even had one in Denver. And then we started basically getting franchisees. And our model was basically they would pay a franchisee fee to get set up. And then we would set them up. And then we got a cut of the revenue that they would take in. And so it was kind of a, a good model and a good situation for a while. What we realized, though, was at, uh, the big guys started coming in towards the end. Um, you know, the Grubhubs and the DoorDashes and the Uber Eats. And these guys had billion, literally billions of dollars at their disposal. We didn't raise money. We started it from our blood, sweat and tears. And so we knew we wouldn't be able to compete with them long term because they were they were going to our restaurants and basically saying, hey, we'll do this for free for a year. Meanwhile, you know, we're getting that's where we make our money it was from the restaurant. Yeah. Mission from the restaurant every time we sent them an order. And they were just undercutting us. And then our restaurants were trying to re renegotiate with us. And we saw the writing on the wall where we're like, these guys are here to lose money to gain market share. They don't care how much money they lose because they just want to grow. Whereas, you know, we're actually trying to run a business here. So fortunately, we got to a point where we were able to put together a deck and start kind of putting together the numbers and talking to different people. And we had a couple of deals that were close and then they fell through. Uh, and then we actually ended up merging with another company out of Minneapolis called Bite Squad. And instead, and what we did is we merged with them and they raised money and they raised um, about at the time it was 25 million. And then we just started buying smaller companies and we got bigger and bigger and mergers and acquisitions. And then we got big enough to get on the radar of, of, of one of these, of a much bigger company. And that's when we got purchased. Sounds like an interesting, like a very interesting um, journey. Did you enjoy it or were you just like uh, fixated on the result? I, I enjoyed it. It's a good question. I, you know, the first, the first half for sure, like when I, when we were growing and we were expanding and there's lots of, I mean, there was a million problems and a million failures, but as you were saying earlier, you know, they were good, the good kind of failures. Cause you're like, all right, how do I get, mm -hmm. Uh, what I didn't enjoy was towards the end when uh, I saw the writing on the wall and I, some of my partners actually disagreed with me. They wanted to stick it out and they said, oh, well, these guys are never going to be able to do what we do. We've been doing it longer. And I said, well, look, with billions of dollars, you can do anything <laughs> and yeah. a business. And uh, so I, it was kind of a struggle to be honest towards the end of, of me wanting to exit and my heart wasn't really in it anymore. And I wanted to move on to the next thing but I was still, you know, kind of, I still had to do my thing with the business. And so I just became completely focused on selling it. I was actually the only one out of all four of us that was like, we're selling and I'm going to make it happen. And they look back now and I, you know, they thank me, but at the time they were like, no, we're not selling this thing. This is our blood, sweat and tears. We grew this from nothing. And da, 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 da. so it became a bit, and then our franchisees, some of them wanted to sell, some didn't. And so it was just, there was a lot of arguing internally and just struggling, trying to get the whole thing pretty and shiny enough for somebody to actually want to buy us and have it attractive enough. So that's kind of how it went. Ask because, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs are fixated on the outcome, right? And uh, actually just like, I was able to internalize this uh not long ago and like right now man I, I feel successful happy and fulfilled right uh even though i haven't had like this major financial breakthrough like you or or even became become a millionaire or anything like that i'm successful happy and fulfilled right now right and, and, and like like I, I have it all and from this place um like i'm able to say that i'm going to be i'm probably going to be a billionaire 
right? Because of how young I am and like my level of awareness and stuff. And because I'm going to keep on growing and keep on uh, focusing on what got me to where I am right now in the first place, which is, you know, like working on all my freedoms consistently. Um, but like I say that I'm going to be a billionaire, but like being a billionaire is not something that I need, right? It's something that I know I can, right? Based on where I am right now. Um, I know I can achieve that. And it's probably going to happen, right? Like with not, I mean, I mean, I, I'm obviously going to work hard. I'm a, I'm a hard worker, uh, and, but it's just who I am. But like, I don't need to get there in order to be happy or like, I don't want to get there because I think that when I get there, I'll then solve all my problems. Um, I, like, yeah, like I just, I just know that I'm going to get there because, well, because I can, and I want to make sure that I'm like, that I, that I do the best that I can with this thing that we call life. Right. And, uh, so that's why I was asking, man. Um, but like right now I feel successful, happy and fulfilled. And the reason is because I've been focusing on all like the other areas of my life on all the freedoms on like my physical freedom, emotional freedom, sentimental freedom. For me, sentimental, sentimental freedom had to become, had to come first, first and financial freedom, because like one thing that I like to say is that you don't have business problems. You don't have financial problems. You have personal problems reflecting in your business. So for the past three years, I had to be, I had to like focus really hard on all the freedoms in order for the financial freedom to work. And, and I was actually blessed because like the financial freedom hasn't been like just started to work this year with like the podcast thing. And um, if the financial freedom had started working three years ago, I would have gotten my sense of self-worth from that. Right. I, I think, you know, I was benefiting the other day and I had this insights and I would have gotten my sense of self-worth from making money. And I, and, you know, and I would have gotten my significance from that. And I would have doubled down on that. And I would have neglected every single area of my life, but because it didn't work like that, you know, I was like forced to find success, happiness, and fulfillment, you know, from other places that wasn't just making money and from working on all of those three. Now, like I feel complete, man. And I just can't describe how I feel right now. And I have this internal motivation because not only do I have everything else, that like every, every, every other man is going to end up looking for a warning. Like I'll, I, I, I'm like operating on my, I, I, with purpose. And I just have this internal motivation that, um, well, doesn't need motivation. Like I don't need motivation. Like I don't have anything neither pulling me or pushing me. Like I don't have a fear of, Oh, I'm going to be poor or whatever, or anything like pushing me. Like I want to be a billionaire. I, like, I don't, I don't need to. Right. So like, yeah, do you understand? I just have yes. this, this internal fire from within, man. And it's really cool. And the way that I got it was from working on those four freedoms. Um, so like, like I would love for you to like talk about your five core. Yeah. I mean, what you just said is, is exactly right. You kind of, you got to get it going on. You got to get, you know, these things, like I mentioned earlier, briefly, when I said, um, what did I say? If I, if I had not, you know, had I, had I gotten into the fraternity, that might've been the worst thing that would happen because then it's like, I would have been, I, I would have yeah. been like, okay, well, I'll, I must be great, but I wasn't. And I, I, I still needed to figure things out and I might not have had that drive to figure them out. And when I sold my business, you know, I, it was very much, uh, this is amazing. This feels great. I built this baby from scratch and there is no other feeling like, you know, from what I went through to the end and then getting that paycheck at the end, it feels damn good. But then it was very quickly. Now what? Uh, within a couple of weeks, you know, there's only so many pina coladas and golf you can play. Uh, and that's, you know, we're not built to just sit around and do nothing. Bottom line is you have to be growing. And so when you, I like how you said you're already, you know, um, you, you're satisfied, happy and fulfilled because it's like, you don't need to be a millionaire or a billionaire. And, and that's often when you look at the people that are really successful, it is usually the byproduct of just them doing what they are passionate and are really great at and love. And then it, the money just kind of comes. And so that, you know, and that's that growth and owner mentality I was talking about earlier. And that's exactly what you need to have. And you've got it. And hopefully your listeners will pick up on that. So the, my five cores are your mindset is number one, your relationships are number, or excuse me, your career and your finances are number two, your relationships are number three, your physical health is number four, and your emotional health is number five. And to me, mindset, the first one, it's the most important. That's that growth owner versus a fixed victim. It's I've got everything within me to kick ass, take names. Obstacles are temporary roadblocks waiting for solutions. I'm going to give fear the finger and I'm going to learn and fail forward and grow every step of the way. And it's only a matter of time 
until I get there. And I'm just going to keep trying until I do. Um, you know, once you get that, if you get that in place, everything else becomes incrementally easier. And that doesn't happen overnight, especially, like I said, if you grow up in an environment where you're not getting that and that didn't come natural and the habits that you've developed aren't based around that, everything else is going to be a lot harder. Right. Um, but then once that starts to kick in and you realize as you have that, it's amazing. The friction just starts being reduced and you get more confidence and you want to look better. And then you want to have more, you want to work out and you want to eat better and you want to get more sleep and you, you want to have that energy. Right. And, and relationship wise, like you want to, you want to spend time with people and you want to help them and give to them versus being at all about you and selfish ones. And, and then that, you know, and then it all just sort of feeds off of each other. Um, and it's got a ripple effect. And then, you know, you start building momentum in one area, then the next area starts building momentum and that plays off of, of each other. And so the idea is you're just kind of building momentum in, in all of these areas slowly but surely as you head up into the, the bright, bold, beautiful sky. Yeah. So man, you're big into, into like gamifying and, and like gamifying your habits, especially. Uh, like I also do that, right? Like, you know, I track everything that I do you know, like my sleep, my, uh, my core, my, my core four freedoms. Like I do two things for each and every single day. I make sure that I do those four things. Like I, I'm not, that's not, that's not even something I do. That's something I am to, to this point, right? Which is a very important, a very important uh, concept, right? Like becoming the, the person that you need to be in order to do the things that you have to do in order to have, right? Be, do, have. So like uh, for this Q2, one of my goals for Q2 is like having elite finances. It's not specific, but I have an idea of what that means. And it, it means like uh, to have my finances like very clear, to know exactly what comes in, what comes out, and to like be able to be in control of my finances uh, and have like different buckets to put my, my money into and all that. And uh, so, I, so there's three questions that I always ask myself. Where am I? Right. Where do I want to go? And who must I become to get there? Right. And like, and then, and then inside of that third question, comes the comes another question which is what kind of habits does that person need to have in order for him to go from where he is to where he wants to go and in order for me to go from having like finances that suck that, that, that like i literally don't know where my money goes uh and i like just spend emotionally and stuff in order to have uh, like um you know elite finances like the person who i who i have who i must become needs to have a habit of checking his finances every single day for at least 30 minutes and i've been doing that for the past what three weeks of the quarter now and like the results have been amazing, man. So habits, right? Like, we'll talk about habits and like becoming. So like, what do you, what do you take on that? What do you take on that? Yeah. I mean, to me, habits, you are your habits, your habits are you within each of these five cores, you've got habits in each one. And the majority of us have what I call these failure habits. Again, that have come from your influencers growing up, your parents, your peers, media, school, whatever that you, you think you're, you put yourself in a box and you're taking actions that you think are going to make you happy, but they're really actually having the opposite effect. And so the idea is to shine a big old spotlight on your life and say, okay, what is it in each of these core areas that I'm doing that is hurting me, that is causing friction and preventing me from building momentum, becoming happy and then reverse engineer. And if once you figure out, okay, this is what it is where I want to end up. And I actually have an exercise called, it's called back to the future exercise where you go to the end of your life and you're being eulogized. And it's like, what do you want set at your funeral in these main areas of your life? Um, these five cores, because then that forces you to get rid of all the other garbage and crap around mm -hmm. you that you think is important, that may be shiny and distracting you from what's going to make you actually happy. And then you reverse engineer it and then you go to your habits and you go, okay, is these habits, this is, these are the habits I have in my physical health core. Are these habits in line with what I want said about me? in my physical health at the end of the day, like he was, he was Peter Pan. He never seemed to age. He was always had tons of energy. He, you know, was, was always, you know, until the very end active and doing things. And, you know, if that's the person you want to be is eating Cheetos and sitting on the couch and not exercising and, you know, not getting a lot of sleep, you ain't going to end up there doing it that way. Right. So then you start reverse engineering and forming your habits that way. That's how I do it anyways okay cool so man how do you replace failure habits with success habits is there like a like what is like the main key to be able to do that 
So I, I'm actually, yeah. So I have an Excel sheet that I keep track of and I'm building an app that's going to do it to make it really gamified and it's going to make it fun. And it's going to, you're a rocket ship and you have these five core engine, five cores of your engine. They're the main areas of your life. And in order to break earth's gravitational pull, you have to slowly but surely start replacing your failure habits with success habits. And excuse me for a second. Kids are here. Sorry, hold on. I'm sorry. This is real world. <laughs> I edit that out or just yeah. No worries, man. Uh, so yeah, so I mean that's you know, game and you're gonna be this rocket ship, you're gonna have these cores, and and you're literally gonna be going to different planets, meeting aliens, learning universal wisdom from these these aliens, fighting through asteroid fields, and 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 the only way to be able to get to the next planet, the next solar system, the next galaxy is to replace these failure habits with success habits. And there's a morning routine that you kind of check in on your habits and you're reminded of what it is you're working on. And then there's a night routine where you're grading yourself and you're keeping track. And that's basically what I'm doing now manually with an Excel spreadsheet. Cool. That's amazing. That sounds amazing. It's actually uh, very familiar. Uh, and then I can give you some feedback. I'll probably give you some feedback right now after we stop recording and I'll point you you know, it's over something that can help you, but yeah, pretty cool, man. So we have uh, five minutes and I finished every single interview with asking five questions. All right. And like the first question is if you could go back in time, if you could go back in time to give your 20 year old self some advice, what would that be? Like not, don't you not changing your life or redoing anything, but just give your 20 year old self some advice. What would that be? Uh, it would be just to, to keep your chin up and remember that you have strengths and weaknesses, just like everybody else. And you need to focus on your strengths and learn to outsource and work around and realize that your weaknesses aren't really weaknesses. We're just all born a certain way, but just really harness and focus in on those strengths and those passions. It's amazing. Yeah. I love that one. Uh, the second one, it's a mindset. All right, so what is a mindset shift that you've had that you can share with us that you think has contributed to your success? Uh, I mean, I would say just the example I gave earlier when I, in college, when I read that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, that was the big kind of spark catalyst for me that shifted my mindset from that fixed victim to a growth owner of somebody that says, okay, I, I, I can be the person that I want to be. It's just going to take hard work and staying with it and changing my habits, but it, it's in me. Cool. Awesome. The third question is mindset map. So do you have any uh, advice, tool, tactics, strategy, anything that you can give us, any uh, wisdom or anything to help someone gain more clarity, clarity about who they are, what they want, where they're going, clarity, just more clarity. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I would say that back to the future exercise is probably the best thing. Um, if you go to my website at more momentum.com, M O O R E momentum.com, there's a quiz you can take to sort of see where you stand in each of your cores and kind of will give you a baseline of how you're doing in each. And then, um, you, after that, it'll take you to a, a place where you can do the back to the future exercise and sort of understand where you want to end up and what you need to start doing now to change your life to get there. Nice. Awesome. All right. So, Uh, we'll put the link to that quiz, uh, you know, in the description of where it disappears. Can you repeat it one more time? The link? Yeah, it's more, uh, M O O R E momentum.com and just on my homepage. And then right there at the very top, there's a button. It looks like a video game button. It says start, press start to, to, you know, get going. Got it. The cool. Mindset map motion. All right. So, you know, you're beginning to have it. So what is one habit that you have that you think has contributed to your success? Uh, yeah, I would say just persistence. Um, I have this just ability to just not give up no matter what, because again, I think it goes to having that growth mindset where it's like, I know that it's in me and I know it's there and it's only a matter of time before I get there. And I know I'm going to run into a lot of roadblocks and fail and stuff, but I'm just going to keep going because I know that that's, that's what it takes to, to get to where I want to be. Yeah. That's, that's the key, right? Uh, persistence. I love that, man. So mindset map, motion, measure, all right? So you're also into gamifying and tracking and stuff. So what do you think about tracking and measuring? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I use my, that Excel sheet, like I was mentioning now, my app is going to sort of take that place. But right now I literally have an Excel sheet that has my five cores and the habits that I'm working on. And I review it every single morning and I look at how I did and I grade myself on how I did the day before. And I put in any notes. So it's kind of like a little journal too, on things that went well, things that didn't go well, that I want to work on. And so it's just, it's a way to hold myself accountable every single day and remind me of the things that are important. Oh, so it's good for accountability. Um, well, man, well, yeah, that's, that's mindset, map, motion, measure, money. Right? If you get those four right, you'll get the money, which is results in every single area of your life with your mindset, with your career and finances, with your relationships, with your physical health and your emotional health. So, uh, man, you know, we've, we've come to the end and uh, I really, I really enjoyed this talk with you. I really appreciate you being here and making the time to be here, man. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you so much, Alex. This was amazing. I really appreciate you having me on and uh, I enjoyed our conversation and I'm looking forward to keeping in touch. For sure, man. Well, I'll see you later, man. Okay, thanks, man. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez 1020 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 